Hey there, this is part two of the Elven Library Ruins, which is rapidly starting to look like Elven Dwarven Library Ruins with these stairs. I make it up as I go, so by next week it could be Elven Dwarven Gnomish Undead Library Ruins, who knows. I hope you enjoy the video. I just used a piece of XPS foam for the um, platform and then I used a dinner plate, a small dinner plate to give it a, a nice perfect circle and then marked my lines out using a ruler. I always use a, a tool like a ruler so I don't have to actually measure anything, I just find a centre line and, and go from there. I press nice and firmly to get nice deep recesses so it really looks like tile. And then I get my lump of concrete so I can start to really rough it up and make it look damaged and worn. I drew a line around it for some small detail before I uh, got stuck into it and took some pieces out, crushed some down to make it look like crushed and broken tile and some little holes just to put the balusters in later. I put brown ink and a coat of a greyish white on top of this just to give it that concrete effect before I applied any colour that's in the first video just to dirty it up and make it look like stone. Some brown, yellow, green, try and keep it natural and just dry brushed it on. It kind of looks um, like moss growing and even though it will have foliage on it later and soil this will still come through and it keeps it looking natural. I gave it another dirty wash with the brown ink that was watered down, quite well watered down and after I dirtied it up again I did lighten it very slightly again just with a highlights from a grey that I'd previously used. Every time you add another layer of, of a dirty wash or a highlight, you can see more and more of the indentations just picking up through it. It's a little bit wet, but it, you can see how it's going to look. It looks quite good and, and natural. I just made the little balusters from some fancy toothpicks. Really sort of quick, easy cheats. I like cutting corners. <laughs> I just stained them with some brown ink as I do with everything. I've been watering this ink down because my supply is almost gone. It's going to be a sad day when that happens. I gave each of the little balusters a coat of rose gold which was just burnt sienna and gold acrylic paint mixed together. They look quite metallic and good. And the railing was made from foam core board, just thinly sliced and uh, painted with the rose gold. And then I just sort of squeezed and bent the end to give it a curve to just make it look like a proper hand railing. Another corner cutting method. <laughs> the stairs I didn't show how to make because there's a previous video on making stairs and ladders. I use a stair jig for doing this one, so check that out if you uh, want to know how to make the stairs. I stained them with the brown ink and again with this rose gold colour that I concocted. I keep it uneven to try and give the uh, the wood sort of a appealing look as in paint peeling not appealing. You know what I mean. They came out quite nice. Little platforms that I made to link the stairs up. Just made them out of foam core board and marked them and painted them. Nice, quick, easy little one to do. I just got the foam core board and cut it in a square exactly the width of the stairs and peeled it. Once again, instead of having to measure everything, I just used the objects that I've already created, as in the width of the stairs, and then 
the skirt of the side of the stairs. I use the uh, coffee stirrers. I'll use the width of that to create this little pattern in the foam. Once I'd done this, I just gave them a straight up coat of the rose gold. It didn't need brown stain because you, you don't notice it on the black foam core board. Now the platform's done, I can put it in place and then I'll use it as an anchor just to, to balance all my pieces on when the stairs are finally complete. I got these um, skewers from the supermarket just to make the balusters, the arch works really well. You just glue them together and cut them up. just cut them at an angle that would be suited to the, the stairs and as always I gave them a stain of watered down brown ink I broke a lot of these up not just because it's going to be ruins but because they were so hard to cut so I could actually space them apart and make it look like the staircase is somewhat complete. Again with this rose gold that I kind of, I'd pick up different bits of it so it would be intentionally uneven just to give it a look of, of peeling paint and just sort of lumped it on here and there. I was most definitely not careful with it. This post is for the, the little platform. I gave it the same treatment as everything else as well, the uh, brown ink and the rose gold, just so everything's uniform. And that's the stairs done, thank goodness. They look quite good, I like them. I don't know if they fit with an elven library though. <laughs> everything's getting a bit, uh, bit out of whack. Got some little spare bits that'll be placed around the diorama when it's done. Glue's still a bit wet, but you get the uh, the feel of it now. Those bookcases, they really pick up the light beautifully in this. I, I like it a lot. It's going to look good when it's done. The windows, I use some plastic sheeting. I'm sorry, I don't know what it's called. I got it from an office supply store and I'm going to put some clear glue and paint onto it and I'm going to sandwich it between it. And by clear glue too, I did mean clear acrylic glue. I mix it quite roughly. I don't want it beautifully um, smooth and, and together. I'm trying to get some inconsistencies in this and the, um, the ratio of glue to, to paint. You want a lot more glue than, than paint in this because it goes very, very far through it. I just spooned it on. I didn't know what I was doing. I'm making it up as I go, <laughs> but it worked out all right. I just tried to make sure there was a bit of a, a pattern happening just so it wasn't too all over the place. Once I'd, I'd done this with the green and the yellows, I sandwiched the plastic sheets together and gave it a good pressing everywhere and really just tried to thin it out and then pull it apart to let them dry. And then when you've done that, put them back together in one, one go and they will adhere to each other. That way they're protected on both sides too from the paint coming away. I used my template that I used to make the foam windows in the first place, or cut them out, and then uh, a paper template to make the pattern. So I can cut out the foam core board and uh, give it the treatment with the, the concrete, lump of concrete. 
I love that lump of concrete. Now you get to see it in action. Oh, it's brilliant. Best tool I own, this one. It makes everything come up really nice and natural. I love it. After that, I'm just going to give it a, a coat of an offish white grey, just a stone colour. I use blue, yellow, ochre, brown, black and white to create. Give it a light, dry brush. And then I made it dirty again with watered down brown ink. And then I gave it a, another layer of this greyish stone colour. Really picks up the colours through the layers. I'm happy with how these windows came out. Very pleased with how the glass looks quite natural. And I, I cut some pieces away to make it look like there's broken glass and there'll be vines and things protruding through those later on. And that's that for this video. In part three, I'll be able to start working on doing a lot of the foliage and detailing and maybe some bits of furniture, which would be great fun and all the best parts making all the detail. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I'll see you next time.